Hello guys, welcome again to a part two of the same paper from the EC, September 2020. That was the preparatory exam, which is supposed to really push you up to the level where you can gauge how far you are in terms of the basic knowledge that you need and exactly how much more do you need to put in so that you can get to that target mark that you so desire. All right, so I can try to assist you to get the guys. So course in the description of this particular video is a link to a part one so you can see it there also try to check the descriptions of each and every video that I've made because I'm not a robot at times I make an error and I don't see it and at times I watch these videos back and when I do I notice that there's some errors so I always try to correct them in the description but sometimes if it's empty and then there's an error it means I missed it completely because of my time schedule I'm quite a busy man so I try to you know slot in these sessions for you guys just purely for your benefit so it's nothing really out of the ordinary like I said please don't limit yourself to this video there's plenty more people who do great work here on this platform and you may want to have a look at them as well because trust me this is where you call it a do or die type of a situation because you are faced with your finals next and this is the time that you are to make sure there are no prisoners left okay so you leave no prisoners behind guys all right let's have a look at this one so what i've got here is differential calculus question eight okay we've done all the first seven questions at a go but my camera couldn't go further so I had to cut it now without wasting time here define I mean determine the first derivative from the first principles I mean that is Newton's quotient right and you know how I derived it there's a video on the parabola so I've shown how that comes about so you can go and have a look I think every maths textbook essentially for metric does have that so it's not really something special so you just need to know how to use it so we have to derive here first of all you know that by just deriving this it's going to be 1 minus 6x that's the answer so if you don't get 1 minus 6x it's already wrong so you do it again so let's see uh, we're doing question 8 hey, hey, hey. what is this pen that is here in my hand don't like this one because it doesn't do me the greatest of depictions oh it's fine question 8 sorting that one so 8.1 we are given f of x is equal to x minus 3 x squared and we are to do this from the first principles I mean you may as well this implies that f prime x is going to be equal to the lim so always write this as h tends to zero right of what so this is going to be of f of x plus h minus f of x all of that divide by h right I hope I copied it correctly but I doubt I'm wrong so here everything has to come back so the only annoying part is this limb as h tends to zero then we start working on our magic here so what do we do here basically where you see x you put x plus h that's basically what this is all about so we're going to have here x plus h for that part minus 3 into x plus h this is squared then minus f of x is that whole expression so this is going on so it's as it is so it's x minus 3x squared so divide by h I mean this is simple there's no need to lose marks on this one you know trust me it's the easiest differentiation you can ever do Great, so here this is as good as going x plus h minus 3. Here we have to first foil this one out. It's going to be x squared plus 3 
plus 2xh plus h squared. Okay, minus, we deal with this one, it's going to be minus x plus 3x squared. Okay, we are sorted here over h. So this is lim as h tends to 0. Um, and you can see this thing applies into the geometric series. Ne? Finding that formula comes from this understanding. Eh, you guys, I, I don't know how many times must I tell you that things are connected here. This is minus 3x squared minus 6xh over there uh, minus 3h squared minus x plus 3x squared all right all over h so already you can see here that this guy and that guy do a number on each other and they go and that one and that one also do a number on each other and they go so what have we left we have lim as h tends to zero now we can simplify this thing here so what have we got we have h minus 6xh uh, minus 3h squared all over h okay so we have done a bit of some justice to ourselves here. Okay, not a problem. Again, we continue. Only thing about this one is that you have to write this. If you don't, this is where you lose marks. Now here we can tell that, well, the highest common factor for each is h into one minus six x and then minus uh, three h all over h then you can cancel out nicely there this is simply lim as h tends to zero of one minus six uh, x minus three h now once remember you can't divide by zero that's why you can't really put that first you have to get the denominator out because then it becomes undefined now it's linear then you can say this is 1 minus 6x minus 3 into 0. And guess what? It's 1 minus 6x. So therefore, your f prime is that one. And we already saw that by using our power rule, it really works nicely. You know that this is going to be 1, this is going to be minus 6x. And you have it. So you have your six marks. I'm not even going to say where those marks are. You are already familiar with this one. So we can move on. Okay. Now we're going to have to apply the rules of differentiation. So let's see where are them rules of differentiation. Okay. There it is. Now remember, you don't do your own thing here. Don't put primes and things here. Whatever they're giving you, that is basically a dictatory technique. So you are to apply that technique and nothing else, okay? Start doing your own things, you're going to burn here. So you want to keep things as they are. All right, so 8.2.1. We want the differentiation in terms of x of this expression 3x to the exponent 4 minus 4 over x squared all right so this is easy first of all we want dx this implies that the dx is going to be of x uh, okay differentiation in terms of x of course um, minus now you don't differentiate when you have a uh, fraction so you convert this so when this one moves into the numerator, it's going to be 4 into x to the minus 2. It becomes a negative exponent. Now you are ready because once this thing is all linear, so to speak, then you can handle that one. Then we can safely say, uh, therefore we know that this is going to be equal to, now you can put an equal sign, right? 
I know you don't understand these things, but yeah. Uh, maybe we can say not necessarily DX, but this whole thing. I like to make mistakes now. I don't know why. This whole thing is going to be equal to. Now you multiply that, it's going to be 12x cubed minus. Minus 2 times that is going to be a plus. 4 by 2 is 8 x to the minus 3. Alright, so now you have an option. Do you really want to change this to a positive exponent? Absolutely up to you. Or you leave it here, that's still alright. So there's no need to really continue. So that means it's optional to go on to write it like that. So this is truly dependent on the writer's taste. So all you can have here is 8 over x cubed. I mean, this is up to you. If you really want to push it to this far, it's your call. But I think this answer is enough. How many marks are they giving me? Three marks. I think here first is getting this one right and then doing the actual differentiation. I think for each, yeah. For each, so you get your three marks and you move on. 8.2.2 so what is the story there they're telling you to do the differentiation of y over x of that expression over there well we know that first of all y is equal to a squared x plus 6 root x okay that is fine now we have to first simplify Remember, you can't differentiate when you have sets, so you must get them out. So we have a squared times x plus 6 times x to the half, right? Exponent a half, that is what the root sign means. Now, we can simply say this implies that differentiation of y in terms of x, ne. love these things, is going to be equal to, uh, I'm not going to really waste too much time here trying to you know explain a lot of things x multiplies there alone so it becomes essentially a squared then 1 minus 1 is 0 so that is 1 so in effect you end up with just a squared over here then you multiply half here you'll get 3 a half of 6 is a 3 x and then half minus 1 uh, this is going to be minus 3 over 2, right? Right. So, I think uh, you are sorted here. Well, no, 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 no. Half minus 1 is a half, man. Damn it, man. What am I thinking? This is minus a half, okay? So, that is sorted. Again, this is up to you. If you really want to push it further, this is already enough to this point. But some people like to play their maths tricks so it can be 3 over x to the positive a half okay which they can still push it and say x squared plus 3 over root x I mean it's up to you really what you wanna do this is really pushing your luck but for sweet nothing because you're not gonna lose marks this is the end point First of all, to convert that into a set, and then for those two differentiations or differentials, then you're getting your three marks, and you move on. So remember the notation that they dictate. That is just the NB here. Don't change it. Uh, someone asked me, what is NB? <laughs> it's not an English word. It's a Latin word. So it's not a bene. Nota means note. Bene means well. So this is just note well. So please, know some of the things you use. Don't just know them and you don't know what they stand for. Hey, sometimes we use these things carelessly. Idea is don't be careless about your knowledge. Be particular. Iba particular mfanagit. Ngenjalo. Uzolila. Uzolila. So all I'm trying to emphasize is that don't change the notation they gave you. If you do, 
you get burned this is just a technical fact okay guys this is how you take these 11 marks of this question easy this one is where you just take marks okay there is absolutely no reason to lose marks on this section here okay let's move on to a fun part could have done this together with functions but i felt let's just follow the paper for a change ah uh, yeah but on the next one i'll probably just do functions separately all of them together together with the applications of calculus and then do one two three financial maths and the probabilities part and then yeah yeah so that guys you will feel that you are ready now here we are given f of x okay now once you are given you know that you're on the functions now the cubic function you have to explore it what is the coefficient of x cubed is a and that a is one which is essentially greater than zero so what does that tell you your graph looks like on the cartesian plane of course your y-intercept is a two so you know that fine it starts off as an increasing function tens cuts may 10 and do something like that of course this is just an arbitrary structure you're not trying to be accurate at this point but you're just trying to map out what will my structure look like because these things if you don't really capture them i promise you you'll feel like maths is doing a number on you and in fact you'll be just allowing it to do it now that we know this we really don't worry too much about others i mean there could be equal roots at some point it just does not matter we're just interested in the shape and of course we can just capture the y-intercept at this point because it is always the constant okay not a problem let's do this one calculate the coordinates of the turning points of f all right now here we have to do first differentiation this is the quickest way and you don't even want to stress yourself over trying to factorize getting intercepts and then you know what those things are going to mislead you heavily so here the best way to deal with question nine when they ask turning points so you can just say at turning points it is such that the first derivative of our function is equal to zero that's an important statement it's mark worthy okay um, this implies what now you do the actual differentiation by the way write what is given so that you don't have to look for it too far away it's easy to make errors when things are not in front of you then now what do we do here we simply say fine if we do the derivative here it's going to be 3x squared minus 3 equal to 0 of course the derivative of a constant is 0 so you don't worry about it therefore you can tell here that x squared is 1 okay let's just say x squared is 1 like that then you take the square root of each because it's squared therefore x is going to be plus or minus 1 of course these are valid because there's two turning points so that means we have 1 at minus 1 we have 1 at 1 so you can already go to your sketch there I mean this is just a rough sketch although it's not really a big deal so you can say that okay I know I am at minus 1 there and I'm at 1 okay so far you're just trying to entertain yourself to just calm your nerves by pretending you know enough <laughs> <laughs> so they said coordinates of the turning points of f so the basic thing is now we want to know you can say then what f of 1 is going to be equal to what guys i'm really not interested in trying to show the substitution over there but you really have to so if i put 1 there's going to be 1 minus 3 and uh, that be gives me minus uh, hmm. this gives me minus two minus two plus two this is zero whoa once you see that a turning point having a value of zero that is also an intercept so there's equal roots there okay and then you know that f at minus one is going to be you just put minus one over there it's going to be minus one minus 1 plus 
3 is going to be um, 2. 2 plus 2 is 4. So this makes sense. That Okay, if you come back to your rough sketch here, this sketch may help you a lot. Trust me. You may take it lightly, but it will help you. So you already know that here you're looking at 4. But this one says, this graph actually does this. It does this. So that means all of this part is out. Okay, so your graph is that one. So you already know that you've refined your structure. I mean, if you do these things, you'll work much quicker. That I can promise you. But if you don't really do these things, mm, yeah, you're not Okay, the next one says, um, calculate. Oh, did I finish my job? I did not. Therefore, you can say that turning points will be such that we have 1 and 0 and minus 1 and 4. By the way, how many marks do you get for this one? 4 marks. I do think here this statement is mark worthy. To do the actual derivative is good and I think to find the actual x-intercepts is another mark. And then to find this one, yeah, why, why not that one? Yeah, how many marks? Four, yes, Baba, yes, son. So you have four marks. I mean, to put them like that is honestly not really that big, but their actual values are important. All right, we are there, guys. We are there, we are there, where they want us to be. Calculate the x-intercepts of f. Now, this is where the problem comes. This is where the problem may come. So that was 9.1. Okay, we're doing 9.2. Now they want the x-intercepts. So you know that x-intercepts implies that y is equal to 0. Okay, and this also implies then that f of x is equal to zero. Right. Right, which also implies what is f of x? This is x cubed minus 3x plus 2 equal to zero. Mm. Just dragging the maths because I'm trying to be logical and to be systematic, which I recommend you do. But now we already know something. Maybe we can say it here and say but. What is the but about so? The part is that we discovered that one of the turning points has a y value that is zero. And whenever you get that y value of a turning point being zero, you know there's equal roots there. And if there's equal roots, that is also an intercept. So we can say but x, we can say but f of 1 is equal to zero. Okay, again, if you need to convince, you can say c above. Or you can say calculated above. This implies that x minus 1 is a factor of f of x. Already, you're making conclusions. Okay? That is what that story implies. If f of 1 is 0, it means x minus 1 factor theorem. So, I mean, here you may like to say, this is according to the factor theorem. Eba fit ngenqela kan kini fund by integrative ne ne uba simple. Now you are academics, so you may as well show us that you're going to school for a reason. Don't go to school and waste time there. Okay, I know I'm a bit extreme on those little things, but you know small things make the difference. Big things really scare everyone off. Anyway, let's go. So what is the story here? So this implies that now f of x is going to be x minus 1 into equal to 0. What we know is that if this is cubed, then this must be squared. Okay, I'm going to do it by inspection, guys. 
I've already taught you this one during the cubic function exploration day in the video. So if you really want to know what are the methods of factorizing a cubic function, it's one long division, which is the workhorse of doing any divisions or quotients. And then you can use uh, what is called a synthetic division, which is also cool. But then you need to be careful. This one needs to be adjusted because there's a term that's missing here, which is equal to zero. You have to make up for that term is the x squared that is missing before the 3x so you need to say plus 0 minus 3x squared otherwise if you try the synthetic division without making up for what is missing in the standard form then you are dead all right the other one is by inspection which is the quickest so that's what i'm going to use so basically i already have a one with what must i multiply it to get a plus two there it must be a minus two sorted then now we look for this step again if there's two terms in between you can just focus on one the other one falls into place so you don't really have a specific one if there's two but now there's only one we need to focus on that one now basically i'm going to multiply my x with the two there it's going to be minus two ne? Mm -hmm. then what must i multiply this one with to get my minus three obviously this has to be a plus x yeah. because then minus x minus 2x is going to be minus 3 then my factorization is complete which also implies that x minus 1 into we can still factorize this quadratic because we want roots eh? so this is going to be x x minus 2 is basically uh, 2 and 1 but this is positive so 2 must be positive and 1 must be negative and you can see here I have equal roots indeed at 1. Therefore, you can say x is going to be equal to 1. Then you can indicate here that there's equal roots. Okay, meaning there's two roots there. Or x is equal to minus 2. Now, those are the intercepts. Therefore, you can say the x-intercepts are such that we have minus 2 and 0 and minus I mean 1 and 0 and then again here you can still say there's equal roots here so that you capture that so that somebody doesn't say hey, 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 your work is incomplete when so we're just working so hard for three marks but wait this is dangerous but it's not too dangerous I mean I think the mark that is important is here number one number two is then getting up to this stage and um, once we get to that stage, elect the final about two four marks. Got our band to quince a gun to now. Okay, whatever about fate. There you have it. Three marks. I don't know why they are choosing it to be like that. Maybe they're going to say they don't care how you came about it. They'll give you a mark for this one and two marks for stating that there's equal roads. Maybe. Either way, it's an arbitrary mark allocation for now. Now we need to keep this one closed because we've done some work on it. Now let's quickly get to this question here. The question says, um, determine the values of x for which... Now f of x is decreasing. Okay? Now, we need that sketch, don't we? Yes, we do. Now, if you focus on our sketch, is this one over here. This one is incorrect because we did that one before we could figure out a few things. Okay. So, already we know that this is 1, this is minus 2. Ne? So, I'm just going to use my small sketch here because I mean, I really am not interested in trying to do too many sketches anyway. Now, let's have a look here. Letters and what? Gentle ladies, okay, gentlemen, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yeah, eh, you never know what these days, eh? Okay, let's not go there. Controversial is not correct. Okay, maybe let's do our sketch here because I think we need it. That one was a rough sketch. Maybe this one is a bit better. This is two. This is one. This is minus two. This is minus one. So we established that our graph is doing a number up to 4, right? So this is 4. So here it's turning. Yeah. 
Eu vou fazer isso aqui, esse sketch que é para fora. Ai! Não é nem surpresa. Se você quiser, eu vou fazer isso aqui. Eu gosto de formas, man. Eu gosto de coisas que têm uma forma para elas. Por isso é que eu sempre faço o esforço de fazer uma forma de forma. Mas, sim, às vezes isso me mata. Então, esse é o F. Tudo bem, então nós estabelecemos que isso é 1, isso é menos 1, isso é menos 2, aqui, nós estamos em cima. Então, isso é o nosso x-axis, isso é o y-axis, ok? Agora nós temos um bom esquema para trabalhar com. Então, eles estão nos dizendo agora, 9.3.1, então nós temos que fazer isso quando é a função de f a decreasing. Function? Remember, a decreasing function tem duas coisas. You read your graph from the left to the right. Né? So you read your graph like that. Moving from left to right. That one is finished. Um, left to right. Okay. So L to R. Now, as you read your graph, what happens as you come from infinity? This graph is rising, rising, rising. The Y values are increasing. That's what we mean. But here... At the turning point, it is neither increasing nor decreasing, so it's stationary. There. So that point, I'm not going to include that one. So we don't want increasing. So this section here is wrong also. But past this turning point, we can tell that as we move to the right, this graph is dropping, 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 dropping until it is stationary at one. Then beyond one, it increases again. So this part we don't want, we don't want that, we don't want that. The turning point is also not allowed. So this is the section between 1 and minus 1. So it is decreasing there. So we can say x must be less than 1, greater than minus 1. And of course, usually this form you get two marks. So without the sketch, obviously you're going to be dead. You can't answer this question. It's difficult, okay? It's really difficult, so... Don't try it. It's dangerous. Um, but you can look at the first derivative at times and say if the first derivative registers negative y values. Ne. This is where you would see that it's decreasing because in that section it will have negative y values. And then where it's increasing, it will have positive y values. We're looking at gradients as well. Negative gradients, decreasing, positive gradients, increasing. Anyway, let's not overly complicate. We're just looking at this graph. This is either the negative gradient, that's check, or decreasing y values as you move to the left, check. So that is the answer. This is pretty simple. It's an interpretation of your graph, which you need to practice. Without a sketch, I mean, they didn't ask you to draw the sketch. Already they're asking you questions. So that means I, it's like these people are watching my... <laughs> it's like these people are watching my videos, though. Man, the way I do things, eesh, it's like somebody saw this thing and it's like, I'm going to do it. And they did it, okay? But I'm not trying to profess that watch my videos, no. But if you really want to get something out of this exercise, you really want to go and have a look at those ones. I mean, to just expand your knowledge. You probably already know some of the things there, but not in the way that I put them, because you can see how it simplifies your work. You don't have to worry about stressing, doing calculations. You can just do some simple sketch, and then you have what you need before you even start sweating. Okay, we'll be concave down. So once you say concave down, it means your second derivative must be less than zero. Ne? Always. Whenever this is concave down, your second der derivative must be less than zero. Or what about your first derivative for that matter? Uh, it must register what? I think negative gradients. Ne? Mm -hmm. In that section, then it's going to be concave down. All right, guys, let's not complicate our lives. Let's focus on this one because this is the easiest to deal with because this actually says we need to find the point of inflection. Now, is 2 the point of inflection? Well, we know that the point of inflection is between the two x-coordinates of the turning points. This is 1, this is 1. So 1 
plus I said 1 minus 1 is 0 divide by 2 is 0 so x at 0 is 2 definitely that is the point of inflection so you see you can just use your sketch here to decide that oh right there is my point of inflection so obviously this 2 here is our point of inflection is POI that too because it is at x value 0 because that point is always halfway between the two x I mean the two uh, turning points again this is something you need to know and be comfortable doing okay so we have two situations here now when is this concave down we know that it is concave down when x is less than the x coordinate at the point of inflection so we can simply say here x must be less than zero can be equal to zero because it is neither concave up or down at that point but beyond that point is concave up and below that point is concave down so one concave down so you can use the graph you are sorted nah. I think it's three marks so uh, okay maybe let's just be more elaborate you can say the P the point of inflection is given by uh, say we want the x coordinate ne? the x coordinate of the point of inflection is going to be uh, minus 1 plus 1 over 2 which is 0 and then you can say therefore yeah maybe let's start there because I think that is critical it has to come back because I said determine you can't just show up with an answer of course if it was that form you would actually get marks but this one you need to really elaborate a bit that the point of inflection but don't write POI okay they don't know what POI is write the point of inflection and then of course for that you're going to get this substitution and then that one and then that one that is where your three marks come from or which is a much better way you can say um, f of x is concave down when what f dash double dash or f double prime of x is less than zero then what is that so first of all you need the first derivative the first derivative of f of x is, where is f of x? Is this one here. Okay. We've already done it. So once you've worked some things, you just grab it from there. Then you derive that it's going to be 6x only because of a constant is 0. So you already know that 6x is less than 0. Therefore, x is going to be less than 0. So you sort it. So I think this one is even better because... First of all, this is important, the actual derivation and the final answer. It's much more clearer, but again, you will not be punished. Remember, the longest route to the answer is not necessarily the most correct, versus the shortest route, which is not necessarily wrong, okay? At times, whoever did the answers may have done the longest route, but you can see the shortest route, it doesn't really eliminate marks. If it is logical, and you elaborate about it and it's mathematical it is going to be acceptable okay so don't always think that an answer should come from a long approach and the short approach is not acceptable if it is mathematical it is acceptable it just be awarded full marks okay that means you are smarter than the examiner easy all right guys let's not talk too much we just have a lot of work ahead of us now I said draw the graph of g of x uh, okay of x minus 3 cubed this and that and that but what do you see what is the coefficient here is 1 what is the coefficient here is 3 what is the constant there it's 2 so doesn't it look like our little graph here it definitely does so what happened this is a horizontal shift on our graph again if you look at November 2021 final exam this question is there similar to this one like I said pay attention to most recent question papers 
make sure you know them before you go and write your finals or any other exam of course during the year because you stand a very good chance of being asked something similar to that and therefore you already are a step ahead but if you don't pay attention then it's gonna be tears for you gonna be like I wish I wish I wish well I wish is never really useful but you should be glad you did pay attention all right in the end clearly indicating the intercepts with the axis and the turning points okay not a problem so you already know the sketch of this graph so we know that we're shifting every point to the right by three units basically this is just a horizontal shift g of x uh, you can just say um, 9.4 you can say g of x is the graph of f of x shifted horizontally to the right by three units okay such that what uh, okay we can just deal with this one because we just need a sketch also we don't really need such that the graph of g of x is of course there you are already y axis there x axis this is the origin now let's think about it misters and mrs okay mrs you already not you're not yet mrs but yeah maybe there's a very good chance one of you watching here is a teacher trying to get you know some ideas look guys we help each other all the time so this is not strictly for students at times you may be a teacher thrown in the deep end you're probably majoring in economics and stuff and then they decided Ish, we are in short of a maths teacher then they put you there and you don't really like maths like pure maths or whatever then you'll be like Ish, how do i teach this thing sometimes you can get help here as well okay don't shy away even for you guys who are teachers if you are feeling like you're thrown in the deep end and you can't really make sense of something that you want to go and present to your students hey hit me up i'll put my email address on the what you call description as well so that if you feel like you want to drop me something or you want to send a question to it then i'll have a look at it and then of course at least be able to have what you call google meet or zoom but zoom is disappointing for me i don't like it um i think that google meet is by far the best or duo then maybe we can just have a lovely session and discuss and share ideas about whichever question you may have all right otherwise let's keep going guys i'm i'm, I'm starting my nonsense again well now that means every other point shifts to the right by two units so we already have a sketch we don't have to stress if we add three here remember when you're shifting things you're just going to add three to each and every point you're going to add three although you see a minus in your structure there but physically on the graph you're just adding okay so now we're going to say fine this turning point here is going to be what minus it's going to be one plus three man it's gonna be four so this one is at four is so that one is at four so we have a point is so the next one uh, this one is going to fly of course we're going to have a new y intercept which is fine we're going to look for it later and then here what do we have we're going to have this one moving by two units i mean by three units so minus two plus three is one so this one goes to one say this is one over here and then the turning point moves also minus one plus three takes us to two so let's say two is over here so we know that our turning point i mean the y value at the turning point doesn't change it remains four so we know that we will be turning somewhere there okay and of course we know very well that where we turn we turn towards this one 
this one there's equal roots here so we're just going to do our thing okay all right now we are sorted here so you know now the one thing that is most important here is to find the new y-intercept you can just say the new y-intercept is going to be equal to I mean it's such that x is equal to 0 therefore y is going to be equal to now if you put zeros in here when you put zeros in there okay maybe let's just do the substitution nice and easy it's going to be 0 minus 3 cubed minus 3 into 0 minus 3 plus 2 which I am not interested in okay this is minus 27 right 3 cubed is minus 27 right minus 3 cubed of course and then here plus 9 I get minus 18 plus 2 it's gonna be minus 16 so I'm getting a minus 16 so you can already tell that the y-intercept obviously the sketch tells that the tail so we're coming down here so let's see okay so yeah it's a bit scary there so all you can say here you put minus 16 because you had to work it out unfortunately that is the only thing that you need to work out because it changes rather differently from the rest otherwise other things are way to us simply as you know them okay so this is the graph of g they wanted what um, they say uh, clearly indicating intercepts with the axis and the turning points and there they are um, I mean you can just do that so that you can make sure if you don't really want to write those coordinates there you just put those numbers this is done is sort of done of course the shape important uh, for all the x intercepts important for the turning points important for the y intercept that is new so you have your four marks no problem this is super duper done now guys let's do this last part here of this question it says now determine the value or values of k always you will have a simultaneous type of equation such that g of x equals k always has three distinct roots now here you don't want to really stress yourself too much <coughs> you want three distinct roots okay so how would you really are certain yourself that you would have such a situation this is best I mean for a cubic function you don't want to go the route of doing it algebraically it's going to matter you okay I advise against that so this time you need to know the technique it's pretty simple so when you know it so you know that you have a line y equals k basically when you have this and this line is equal to g of x which is that so where is the graph of g of x? The graph of g of x is this one over here. So this means if you're saying, for example, your k is here. So you say y equals k. If you're saying this line is over here, do you see it only intercepts this graph at only one point? Yeah? Not two points. Now, if you keep moving, you'll be like, well, if I'm here, if I'm saying, okay, this graph of k is probably passing through here I don't really care what k is at this point but if it is passing here do you see there's one root there's a second root there's a third root basically the roots of two lines is actually the points of intersection where they are equal so you're gonna have three roots but if you put your k over here at exactly four because remember this is any line basically so do you see you'll only have two distinct roots that is not what we want we want three and beyond this line 
just going to try and mess up this diagram a bit same line do you see you only get one root you only get one root and if you're saying this line is here again you only get two distinct roots but not more so we want three so where are the three you can already tell that this is when this line lies between this maxima and minima and this is between four and zero so what does that mean it means that your k must be less than four because it can't be included when it's included you only have two roots but k must be greater than zero okay because if it is below zero you only get one root so this is where you realize that you need to understand a few things of course i don't know what happened to my lovely thing i like to show shifting this graph instead of you know shifting some line oh there it is i thought i had lost it um the other thing that you want to use i mean you can have something like this in your pocket no one is gonna kill you for it i mean it's not it's not anything it doesn't cop it doesn't help you copy so you just want to create that shape of your graph basically there's my shape i mean it doesn't have to be accurate but try though to be very close to what you have in front of you okay so there's our graph right so we may even suggest that if we're shifting this graph upward because this is a vertical shift when it's a constant it already tells you that you are doing a vertical shift on this graph anyway you can think of it that way as well so when you're shifting this graph upward what do you see you only end up with one root because this is always going to be pulled up like that so you always have one root so if you're pulling it up you only get one root not three distinct roots but if you're pulling it down to this level you only have how many roots just two because there's equal roots there so they are not three distinct but if you pull this one down like that now what do you see you have three intercepts here there's one two three but if you pull it to this level here of one how many roots do you have one two so you can't have the line y equals to zero or the x-axis and if you push it further down you see that how many roots will you get only one ne? sorry only one over there because this is an y-intercept so this is only going to be one root so what is your limit is this line zero and that maximum okay so basically it means your graph should be anywhere in between so you're going to shift your turning points down but between four and zero okay great stuff so you can understand or minus four and zero for that matter because once you hit four here you can already see that this is sitting at zero so the answer is your graph must be between four and zero so that's what you want so guys this is how you answer this so you have two options that can assist you um, to answer some questions of course you need to first think about what is happening so essentially you know that when your g of x is equal to k right it simply means g of x minus k is equal to zero you're just going to consider this graph in standard form then you know that this is a constant it must be a vertical shift unless they are giving you something else so this must be a vertical shift so then you just shift the graph that you already have up and down and then it gives you answers or you shift this line up and down until you get what satisfies your question and then of course pay attention to the max local maxima and minima these ones are called local maxima and minima because you can tell that beyond these points the graph goes even beyond that level and again here below this point the graph even goes below this level but only at these points does it not go beyond okay now you are getting how many marks there guys two marks so this is two marks so this is how you crack those 18 marks okay i hope you loved it and we keep moving
Okay, but wait. Ah, yes, I bet. Now let's do the application quickly of calculus. So it's a different question 10. So we are almost there, but wait. So I hope this one doesn't really become too long. I think we're going to be able to take it down in maybe an hour and some few minutes. Okay, question 10 says the diagram below shows a rectangle OABC. So already they are telling you it's a geometric figure with four sides. What are the properties of a rectangle? This side is parallel to this side and this side is also equal to that side. Always revise properties of any figure that you are given because those properties might help you. And then these ones are equal also. Right, great. That means BC is equal to OA. Okay, not a problem. Um, that means the Y coordinate A is the same as the Y coordinate B. That's the essence of this. Okay, all right. And then, of course, you know that the corner angles of a rectangle are 90 degrees. So these are perpendicular lines, basically. And if these lines, if you find that this side is perpendicular to the x-axis, what does it mean? It means this line is also parallel to the... Oh, doch. You know, you know, you know. So this is overly done at this point. We're just not interested in that. And then they are giving us this line. They're saying C lies on the x-axis. Oh, sorry, by the way. They're saying where B lies on the straight line. Okay, B lies on the straight line. Y equals 3x plus 9. Of course, the gradient is negative, and then you can see that is the one. So already we know here that we are at 9, because that's the y-intercept. The constant always tells you where the graph cuts the y-axis. And we can already work out the x-axis here. If you transpose that, you get minus 9. Divide by 3, you just get 3. So this is 3 as well. So always make a habit. When you provided information, simplify its interpretation into your diagram so that you don't have to keep remembering what did they say again i'm stuck now you're stuck less when you first work out what you are given based on what you see before you attempt questions questions are going to kill you if you don't simplify your work before you attempt anything all right call this one as a revision before that test right yeah now they're saying if b is x is to y, so they're giving us x is to y in terms of the coordinates. Write down the lengths of OC and OA in terms of x. Hmm. Okay, let's try this one over here. Okay, maybe not. Maybe yes, maybe not. Yeah, let's try. So 10.1 here. Let's check. Well, OC is basically x, so we can just say OC is equal to x units because they said the lengths so it's just x because if this is x it means it's the vertical distance from 0 to point c and also to point b so that is x that is done get your mark what about o b now o b remember is the y axis so if this is x what would be y in terms of x? It's going to be exactly that function. So y here is effectively minus 3x plus 9. Whatever x value you have, you put it there, it will give you the y value. So we can already say that, all right, if bc is like that, then oa is the same, right? So we can just say oa is equal to, they said write down. So don't show how you determined it. OA is just going to be simply minus 3x plus 9. Then you get a mark for each, and then you smile. I mean, do you see how easy this becomes? Anyway, say so determine the coordinates of B for which the rectangle OABC has a maximum area. Once you hear that, you know that you're going to do the derivation or derivative. So 10.2. We know that the area is going to be what? The rectangle is length multiplied by breadth. Nee. What is the length in terms of x? It's just x meters. B, the breadth, is minus 3x plus 9. Okay. You are sorted here. So this is going to be minus 3x squared plus 9x. Nee. 
this is wonderful. So now you can say A max is such that the first derivative in terms of x of that area must be equal to 0. This implies that you do that derivative is going to be minus 6x plus 9 equal to 0. Therefore, you know that you're going to have, okay, let's just say also implies minus 6x equals minus 9. Therefore, x is going to be equal to 3 to 9 goes how many times? 3 times to 6, 2 times, and then of course negative divided by negative is a positive. Okay, now we said determine the coordinates. So now we know that x is actually 2 over 3 over there. So therefore, y there is going to be minus 3 into 3 over 2 plus 9, which is whatever that is. So basically what I'm multiplying here is going to be minus 9 over 2 plus 9. So what I do is say 18 minus 9 is 9. Divide by 2 is over 2, so it's 9 over 2. Therefore you can say b is that point 3 over 2 is to 9 over 2. Easy, 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 easy stuff guys. So no need to really panic here. So this was quite cool. Not too complicated, but very direct and sometimes a bit crafty. So the mind is not really relaxed, but it's not really worked too much. So that was just four marks. I think here correct substitution into the, into the correct formula is important. And that statement is cool. And then the actual derivative is excellent. And then maybe getting that x value and the corresponding y value. Four marks, so we can drop this one here. Say fine, we don't need that one. Okay, guys, so this is how you can get this six marks of this question. So pretty easy, ne? Let's quickly get to the last question and seal this. You might just do it in one hour. It looks like it. So, question 11. What do we have? We have 15 minutes guys to go. Now it says during a survey at a certain school, 900 learners, so that is your sample size. So 900 learners are asked to indicate what sport they would like to play as a winter sport code. Learners could choose at most three sport codes. Write the sport codes indicated by learners were rugby, hockey, the tennis, Okay, those are the three. There will be boys and girls teams in all three codes, okay? The data collected is shown in the Venn diagram below. Okay, now we can already see that there's people who just play rugby, hockey, as well as tennis. Those are the people over here. They play all sports. We can see here that 55 plays just two, rugby and hockey, and then 60 here, they play rugby and tennis, and then 85 here, they play hockey and tennis, okay? And then these ones are specialists. They only play one sport. They must be cheerleaders, okay? <laughs> anyway, let's see. Now it says, determine how many learners want to play all three sports. So that means we want the value of x. Again, this is very easy because we know that if we add all of these uh, data values here or data points, they should give us a 900. So let's just go for it without wasting any time. 1.1, 1.1, 1 1.1. So we know that, well, we have x plus 55 plus 60 plus 85 plus 160 plus 200 plus 255 plus 45 must be equal to 900. The only thing is that this thing is annoying. So if we simplify this, we know that x is going to be equal to 
900 minus whatever value we get there. So let me just try. I will not even bother my head here. So 55 plus 60 plus 85 plus 160 plus 200 plus 255 plus 45. I'm getting 860 so when I transpose this one it's gonna give us 860 so X so we can just take this one from 900 and I'm getting 40 so by the way what is this it's learners so you can say 40 learners learn to answer fully okay don't just 40 40 what 40 bees or beans or fools <laughs> it's learners <laughs> okay excuse me for the thingy all right, so we are sorted. So we know that this guy is 40, 4, 0. 4, zero. Quinto. Is it 4? 4 means 4, ne? 4, zero. Uh, I don't know how to count in Spanish, man. It's 4, zero, whatever. I cannot have a human. I have a rock like a na. Ish. Yeah, ne? being silly, man. Sorry. Okay, so the question says now, if a learner is randomly chosen, what is the probability that he or she prefers to play hockey only? Hockey only. So what is that one? So you know that the probability for the event, say H, is going to be the ones that only play hockey. It's just going to be 200 over the total which is 900 so let's see what that is I mean this is pretty easy so it's 200 uh, divide by 900 don't know why they asked such a simple question so this is just simply 2 over 9 and that's it leave it like that because it's like too recurring so leave it as a proper fraction it's better like that but if you could take it to a decimal you could they dictated you would say 0, 0.22 but leave it like this at this point when it doesn't give you a rational number all right so this is basically that and that this is where your two marks come from now determine the percentage of learners who are likely to play at least now you see likely to play and then at least two of the sport codes now at least in maths is greater or equal to ne? always remember that at most is lesser and equal to but at least is either that or more so the more is just three so basically it means you're going to play you're going to add all those probabilities at the intersection this is those who play two plus the ones who actually play more because at least says greater or equal to so here all you can say is that the probability i i don't know man of this event <laughs> Ah, uh, boy, oh boy. Boy, oh boy. Of course, maybe you can say the probability of A. No, not A. It's R. A. R H. Or. It's going to be H T. Or. It's going to be R T. O R D H, all of them. Just going to add them together. Maybe it's a bit naughty for me to write it over there. It's crazy, man. But this is going to be 55 over 900 plus 60 over 900 plus 85 over 900 plus the last one, which is that 40. Over 900 so when it says at least you know that you're going to add all these probabilities so what is the probability for that of course everything is going to be over 900 ne? so you're just simply adding the numerators because they have the same denominator so there's 5 5 whoops plus CGCT plus 8 5 plus 40 is 240 yeah, ne? divide by 900. So I'm getting 4 
over 15 again you're getting something very silly so you rather stay away from trying to round off you just leave it at that before to and then you are like thank you very much so these ones were very easy guys so please there's no need to um, there's no need to suffer here so um, yeah this is just easy to max again because all you needed to do here is just these substitutions and that final answer is there anything no the answer is there is no there is nothing to do there is nothing to do nothing 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 so you leave at this one uh okay they said determine the percentage so i'm sorry guys you can't leave it here oh dog. see now i'm really losing focus percentage now we're going to have to say here four divide by 15 is that one and then you say times 100 ish i forgot but for it so this is 26 comma six seven percent now you have to round off you don't have a choice so i think the answer is actually converting that to a percentage so not a problem guys sorted um yeah you can see this one is a bit more but for just less okay it's not a big deal now let's finish up let's finish up guys now we have this what is this fundamental counting principle is always there so there's no need to not know it. So 11.2 here. So 11.2 says, how many ways can, okay, look, consider the word spectrum in physics, hmm, absorption versus emission, continuous versus, you know, abs okay, whatever, yeah. How many ways can the eight letters be arranged? All right in any order so there's the restriction so if it is in any order there's eight of them so fine we can say 11.2.1 for a we have how many spots eight spots one two three four five six seven eight so if we choose one before for the first spot we have eight options for the second spot we have seven options because already put one for the third one we have six because already put down two then here, like that, like that, like that, like that, like that. And then, of course, here, you multiply all these possibilities. That's your first rule, I guess. Okay, maybe not. I don't really care anymore. So you can say this is equal to 8 factorial. But don't leave it there. So do it. So 8. Then you press Shift. Then you press that inverse but in there it gives you factorial. So 8 factorial is 40,320 40, ways. As I said, how many ways? Okay. So you guys already know how to do this one. This one is just, you know, you know, this one is just not a problem. Okay, guys, so basically, how many marks are they giving you here? Just one. Wow. Okay, they are fine. So, uh, B, what is B saying? It says such that the first letter is a vowel. Okay, how many vowels do we have here? We have A and U. Okay, that is when you actually open your mouth but this is coming so it's close uh, i don't know in so to and other languages but this is coming so those are vowels r a e o u so e and u those are vowels right the rest is consonants all right not a problem so let's see what is the story so there's just two of them so if the f we have eight spots one two three four five six seven eight so Pay attention to the technique, guys. It works. So now they're saying the first letter, such that the first letter is a vowel. So we have two options here. And once we put down, everything else pretty much just goes. Okay? Yeah, everything pretty much just goes. So we're just going to have two here. And then, well, if we already put one here, we have seven options for this one, six options for this one. Um, 
we have five options for that one four options for that one three options for that one two options and one so we're multiplying this one so this is effectively two times seven factorial isn't it mm. you can just think of it that way because that two is a bit special let's say two times seven factorial is what is ten thousand and eighty yeah and 70 okay again ways is in dira yeah it's in dira so again how many marks are they giving us there two marks okay i think the mark comes from that i know seven factorial are they not marking it okay let's just mark this whole thing and that one say two marks okay so please guys learn the techniques if you get them right you don't really need to master too much in here hey perfect our hour is trying to run away from us so let's do this one 11.2.2 yeah but we're going to try and wrap it up very quickly now we have they say calculate the probability that in a particular arrangement of the eight letters the letters tpr will be next to each other in any order they must be next to each other but in any order okay now the problem we still have eight spots one two three four five six seven eight okay great stuff but now we are told tpr must be following each other so now if they are in any order now we can just decide we're putting it in the first place like that the first three spots so for the first one we've got three for the second one we've got two options and then one because I said in any order but this must be considered a unit okay it is itself being multiplied but you consider it a unit because these ones must be next to each other in any case those are the three letters so how many letters do you have left one two three four five and then of course here what you want to do is to say fine here I can place them in any order as well okay so of course here you have five options so to speak uh, yeah you have five four three two one okay of course you want to multiply but remember the problem is that this thing can be here in between these two it can be here it can be here it can be here they can be at the end so you see it changes the game a little bit so what do you end up with you have how many spots now this you consider as one so it's one two three four five six so basically you're going to have here the probability of having whatever tpr whatever is going to be what is going to be three factorial which is just those ones appearing in any order but next to each other multiplied by the number of ways this thing can be happening okay these other letters are there but you're going to have one two three four five six positions so this is six factorial over the total we had eight factorial right there were eight letters so this one is a bit a technical question so you need to master these type of questions again when they put restrictions please know how to handle them or else there's going to be tears so divide by 8 factorial so guys I'm getting 3 over 28 okay so I don't know let's see again it's, an, it's a mess so you don't want to you don't want to rationalize that you just leave it like that probability can be expressed as a fraction as a decimal as a percentage it's up to you this is safer okay so guys this is how you get your two marks again i guess for that and then for the answer but they should have given you a bit more but yeah they don't care now let's do the last run of this little business here so that guys you can now sit back look at this thing and enjoy oops i'm going where the paper ends here right here so we're doing 11.3 
So 11.3 says, okay, a bag contains only two colors of tennis balls, okay? We've got red and green, okay? They're in the ratio 1 is to 3. So remember, a ratio is not really saying that there's only one red ball and then there is um, what you call, uh, what you call, yeah, green balls. Now, two balls are picked at random, one after each other without replacement. Again, pay attention to those key statements that nothing is being replaced. Now, that if it is not re replaced, remember there's independent and dependent events. So, once you're not replacing, you're going to have dependent events. And you know with dependent events, what is the story? <laughs> the probabilities sort of multiply, but when they are independent, what do you do? You do the addition rule, isn't it? Yeah, boy. So, guys, you know these things now. I can't say this too much. Calculate the number of balls in the bag given that the probability of picking first a red ball and second a green ball is... Okay, fine, we can deal with this one later. But let's first deal with that ratio. So we can say here, well, we have X red balls then we will have 3x green balls. So what is the total? The total is going to be 4x balls. Of course, x is any number. So be very careful. You need to really plan your attack before you start working. So you know the total. Now you can deal with this one. First of all, you need a tree diagram. This is what makes this job a little bit lighter. Okay, the first pick, it can be a red ball right what is the probability of picking a red ball is basically 1 over 3 you can say x over 3x no 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 the total is 4x hey wonder what are you trying to do trying to commit suicide this is x over 4x which is simply 1 over 4 okay it's a quarter so we are sorted there for now, for now. And then we can do a second pick here. We can still pick red. We can pick green this time. So I'm going to use the capital letter G's and stuff. All right, guys, so what do we do here? Now, we know for a fact that we've already picked one. So if we're going to pick a red ball, they were x, so they are certainly going to be x minus 1 over. And then, what would be the denominator here? There were 4x total. So we've lost 1 already. So what is that going to be? It's going to be 4x minus 1 also. So you know that this is as simple as that. Okay. But I'm a bit thirsty, guys. But let's finish up and then I can go drink something. Now, here's the thing. If it happened that we didn't go that way, we went this way, there were still 3x here of these ones. But we already picked one, so the answer here is still going to be 4x minus 1, right? So because we've already lost one there. So this is how you work your three diagrams. And then, of course, we could have chosen this path of green. So if we chose this path of green, we will simply have 3x over 4x at the beginning, right? Because nothing has been lost. But from here, we can go this root of red. We can go this to root of green. So I think you need to know this one. I mean, it was asked in the finals of last year. It was asked also in this major exam in this manner. So it's coming back. So you can see the consistency there learn these things. Sometimes they can be a bit technical. Now, what is the story here? If we've already chosen one, but these ones essentially are just x, but the answer is we've lost one, so it's going to be 4x minus 1. <coughs> so, that's what we've got. And then the next one, we are going to say, well, if we continue to pick here, there were three of them, so we're going to have here 3x minus 1 over, if we didn't go that way, of course, it's going to be 4x minus 1. So, guys, this is very simple. Once you have your little thingy there, you can just work your magic. Now they are saying to you, 
the probability of picking a red ball and green. They are saying red first and then green. RG. Okay. So, of course, this is end. Ne? These are dependent events. So, you multiply their probabilities. Is it it? Yeah, bo. So, they are telling us that this thing is equal to 1 over 5. But now this implies what? Now, we said first red, second green. So, we're going this. Um, so, they are taking us into this route here. Yeah. So we're going that route. So you see, when you have a tree diagram, you, you really don't suffer. I mean, this is A end. Maybe I should have said end. A and G. So we know that the what the multiplication rule or the product rule, we're going to have P of R multiplied by P of G equals 1 over 3, hey, 1 over 5, you win. Now what is that? So this one was essentially 1 over 4. Because I mean the x's take each other out. But this one, 1 over 4. I mean the x's take each other out. But this one is definitely going to be 3x over 4x minus 1. This is 1 over 5 over here. So what do you do in a situation like this? Well, since this is a product, you can already eliminate this one because it makes life a bit easier when you first deal with one side. You divide by a quarter, then you're going to divide by a quarter there. So this one goes. This implies that we have 3x over 4x minus 1 equals 1 over 5. You flip this one is 4 over 1. Now we are a bit sorted here, so this implies what? That we have 3x over 4x minus 1 equals 4 over 5. Then at this point you cross multiply. Life becomes a bit much nicer. 3 by 5 is 15x equals. This one is going to be 16x minus 4. Then you're like, okay, 16 is big. I can bring in this one and rearrange. So 16 minus 15 is going to be x is going to be equal to. Transpose the 4, it goes like that. So x is 4. You are sorted. Now that you have 4, what was the question again? Calculate the number of balls in the bag, okay? So we know that the number of balls in the bag is basically 4x. You can say, therefore, the total number of balls is 4 into 4 which is 16 balls all right guys so this is core so once you do your magic you are sorted here of course I think to get the tree diagram is important I think here what matters is this correct substitutions here Mm, yeah, I think the correct, I mean, working out those probabilities is quite key. So three marks and then solving for x. The rest is just mathematical gymnastics, which you already should know if you are a matriculant doing maths. Otherwise, maybe a grade 8 would be forgiven for this. But you can't be and you won't be rewarded also for applying them. Then, of course, the answer there. So we have five marks. All right, guys, this is how you could have scored yourself this 15, 150 marks. Of course, if you spot any issues in my calculations or you hear me say some crazy things, at times I don't even hear myself what I'm saying. I always wondered when I say something to people and they're like, hmm? And then I have to repeat and in my mind I'm like, come on, guys, that was very clear. But now doing these videos has really revealed to me that at times I say crazy things without noticing I am saying those things. And so if I say anything that truly is not correct, please ignore it. Or at least revise it or even comment about it. But as for the performance, the calculations and depictions, those ones are key. So please make sure you say that to me so that I can rectify.
but I would say to you look in the description box as well in case I have spotted an error then I can you may find that I've already elaborated on that there on top of that you're going to find uh, a link to the part one of this paper and also I'll divide this one into chapters so that you can just quickly zoom into the ones that you want but I'm just trying to avoid a lot of videos so that you end up having this paper disconnected and you don't know what is where at least you find them under one video but you can pick and choose which section you want all right guys um bye bye for now i'll see you in the next video i'll do another paper and this other paper is certainly going to test your understanding not just gauge whether you are there or not it's going to definitely test your understanding i don't know why they do such papers for sure uh, because those papers are truly for me personally they are not for trials because that is like a final exam and what is the purpose of doing that when you are saying you are trying people I really don't know but in any case whatever is done it's done so people have faced it and I will share it with you next bye bye guys keep sharing the videos of course if you have not been a person who really believes there is something you can get in here. I'm sure you can see now that, well, there is a little bit of something. Even if it's just too little, that can go a long way. So you may just make sure you are notified every time there is something new added. You may even subscribe. Just be, you know, one of us here. So that we can just continue this thing of working together. And by the way, thank you guys for your subscriptions those who do i can see we are slowly creeping towards eight thousand subscriptions i mean i did not expect to get there created this for just a group of seven eight people now all of a sudden it looks like i'm digging into the country <laughs> so yeah but it's really reassuring guys to see that uh, the little bit of what i can do is really doing its little bit to assist you Bye-bye.